Dear brothers and sisters, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and the Lord your Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, heavenly God, heaven, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus. Amen. As we continue our Lenten devotionals for the themes of our services, today is called Suffering and Love. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And when Jesus said, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but you what you will. Mark chapter 14. I find it very difficult to write about this passage. My mind and heart stand in awe of Jesus' suffering and of the great love that he has for us to go through this for our sake. His humanity is fully on display in this story. We can see that he is fully aware of what's about to happen, and as with any human being, his body and soul shudder at the prospect. No wonder Luke says his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. No wonder he prayed, remove this cup from me. His suffering had already begun. But there are other smaller things to notice. He took his friends with him almost to the very spot where he ended up praying on the ground. Peter and James and John, the ones closest to him. Jesus didn't want to be alone as he struggled with what was to come. And look at the name that he used for God, Abba, which is the term a child would use for his dear father. All of this shows us someone who clearly loves us very much to go through all of that and still pray, yet not what I will, but what you will. Most of us never get the choice when it comes to suffering. It is forced on us by the circumstances of our lives, and we simply have to muddle through. But Jesus, he chose it. He chose obedience to the Father he loved, and he chose salvation for the people he loved, for you and for me. His suffering, death, and resurrection have given us life. You know, um, <laughs> it's all too common today to see a lot of the televangelists and even different preachers around the world preaching what we call this prosperity gospel. This gospel that says, well, if you have a strong enough faith and you pray hard enough and you do the right things, or even better yet, you send the church enough money, we hear that a lot too, don't we? Then your life will be good and you will be happy. Then I guess I'm in trouble. Because there are definitely points in my life where things aren't good and I'm not happy. In fact, for most of us right now, things aren't good and we're probably not the happiest. If those preachers are right then, we can't really explain what happened to Jesus because he was God and he was perfect. You can't get better than that and yet he still suffered. I guess sometimes it's a big pill to swallow to realize this, but suffering is part of the Christian journey. In fact, I always say the day that you became a Christian, there was a big target that was placed on your back. Congratulations. One that Satan and this world likes to shoot at. That's just reality. I suppose that's probably not the best way to bring new Christians into the church. Hey, come join us. After all, you will suffer. It just doesn't sound that good, so maybe it's better to preach, or easier to preach one of these messages that say, well, if you believe hard enough and you live a good enough life, you'll be okay. But I worry about that, because as we go through this life, things are going to happen. There will be death in our families, there will be illness, there will be sickness, there's the coronavirus, there's financial difficulties, and a whole slew of other trials and tribulations and struggles that we go through in this world. They are there. In fact, we don't have to look far, far to find them. And sometimes, and these are, these are all a result because of the fact that we live in a sinful fallen world. We are sinners by our very nature. Since the fall, trouble has existed. 
But sometimes, let's be honest, we're really good at bringing trouble into our own lives when we sin, when we make the wrong choices, when we do things that aren't advisable. But no matter what, when these troubles come into our life, I'm, I'm so worried that these people that hear this other message are going to fall away. That they're going to think, um, well, my faith isn't strong enough and God doesn't love me and I haven't done enough, done enough to earn him. So, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And the reality is, in God's eyes, you're perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. We live in a sinful, fallen world. And we are sinners. These things will happen. But praise be to God in Christ Jesus who walks by our side in every trial, tribulation, and struggle, who walks by our side and puts his arm around us, who says your sins are forgiven, you have eternal life. Thanks be to this Jesus Christ who sets us free and helps us in the midst of trouble to find joy and peace and comfort and even rejoicing in him and in him alone because this is the kind of God we have. Oh, by the way, these tribulations and struggles and troubles, well, they do come into our life. And the great thing is that God uses them for his glory. They aren't wasted. Because as we go through these hardships of life, there's one thing for certain. We grow closer to God because we realize our total dependence upon him, our desperate need for this Jesus to interact in our lives, to get us through these troubles. This is the reality. In fact, um, I'm going to say this like my, my grandma would have said it, so it's not an exact quote from Luther, but Luther alludes to the fact that if these things happen in our lives so that we don't get too big for our britches, so that we realize we need God, it causes us to turn back to him and to cling to him all the more and find that peace, joy, comfort, and hope, and rejoicing that he already has for us, for you, and for me. You see, it's a beautiful thing. Jesus says we will have trouble. He tells us that. So if you're thinking you're going to sign up for the Christian faith and not have trouble, well, guess what? Jesus says in this world you will have trouble, but take heart because I have come to give you peace. He doesn't take away our troubles, but in the midst of our troubles, he gives us peace. This is resilience. This is strength. This is hope. Not from ourselves, but through God in Christ Jesus by the power of word and in sacrament, interacting in our lives for our benefit and growth and to his glory. But as always, Jesus shows us something else in this message for today too. Something very important for us to especially remember right now. It is very normal for us as humans when we're going through troubles and trials and situations and temptations and struggles in our lives to want to isolate. It is normal. It is not healthy. There's a difference. It is normal. It's not healthy. For some reason, our old sinful nature rises up and thinks, I can do this on my own, or I don't want to bug other people, or I don't need other people right now, just let me be to myself. And for a short time, there's nothing really wrong with being alone. That's okay. But we need other people. God created us to be in relationship. He created us to exist and to live in constant relationship. He said it is not good for man to be alone, so he made man a helpmate. And this is what God has done. We know that we are created to be in relationship because we are created in God's image. And when, and when we're baptized, we, uh, and, and we celebrate the fact that we are in God's image, that we are perfect. And if we look all the way back to, to the beginning, to to the creation story, when God created man, he said, let us create man in our own image. Referring to our, our own image, referring to the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is in complete and perfect relationship, so we need relationship. Jesus demonstrates that in our lesson for today. As he went off to pray and he was already struggling, he was already in such a place of trouble and torment, he took his three best buds with him and he took them and he asked them to stay with him while he prayed. Brothers, we're not Jesus, which means we're not stronger than him. Sisters and brothers, we're not stronger than him. We need others in our lives, and we need that right now. And yeah, it may be hard because we may be living alone, or we may, we may be stuck with our family, and we're not in, in connection with our best friend or our close friends or whatever that might be. So I want to encourage you to do what Jesus did, make it happen. He took them with him. He woke them up in their slumber. Wake up your friends if they're not talking to you. Give them a call. Send them an email. Talk to them over FaceTime. 
Stay in contact with others right now because in this way, we fulfill the love of Christ, right? Jesus says in his word, as we bear each other's burdens, we fulfill the love of Christ. Carrying our neighbor during this time, loving our neighbor and allowing them the gift of being able to love and care for us back, which is a blessing to them. In this way, we share the love of Jesus with each other. So please be intentional during these days to do what Jesus did. Reach out in every mode and possibility that you have. Ask them to go out in front of their front yard and drive by their house and wave to them if you have to. Holler out the window. Be creative. Just do it. If Jesus did it, then we need to too. It's highly important. And also, don't forget, if you are struggling and you need help and counseling, I'm here. Counselors are there. There are people who can answer the phone and it can all be done over the phone. So don't be afraid to reach out during this time. It's God's gift to you. So in this world, we're going to have troubles. This is reality. But the reality is when these troubles come, Jesus is always present. He's present as he gives us relationships and people around us to love and uphold us. And we do vice versa. He's present as he comes into our life in the power of his, his word and his sacrament. He is present with us because he is everywhere at all times. He is present with us to lift our eyes to the hills where our help comes from. He is present to fill us with forgiveness and life and love and peace and joy and comfort, which he won for us in his death and resurrection on, on the cross and in that empty tomb. Jesus comes to us to wrap his arms around us and to promise us that we are not alone. We are never alone. We never have to go through these trials, temptations, and burdens alone, for he is with us. Cling to that promise. Jesus is for you, and he is with you, so you have victory, eternal victory, through his death and resurrection. Brothers and sisters, may God fill you today with his love, his forgiveness, and his peace as you cling to him, and as you look forward with great hope to what he has in store for you and for me. In the name of Jesus, amen.